In this tutorial, we'll talk about PyQt6, the GUI library in Python, and how we can use it to create simple GUI applications. Now, in my previous videos on PyQt6, we've just been talking about individual widgets, you know, in individual concepts. We haven't really talked about how we can bring all of those together and create an actual application. So that's what today's video is about. If you haven't watched my previous videos, that's okay. We'll talk about, you know, everything you need to know will be discussed in today's video. If you want more info, of course, you should refer to my series. It'll be linked to it in the description below. Okay, so don't worry. So without further ado, let's begin. We have a lot of work to do. So as you can see here, I've made a bunch of imports. We'll be using these throughout the tutorial. Okay, the first thing we'll do is create a layout. Okay, layouts are essential to any uh, GUI application. Okay, I may not have been using these when we were you know, just talking about single widgets, but now we're talking about many different widgets bundled in one window. So of course, we, we need a way to lay them all out. So I'm going to be using QGrid layout. Okay, and I'm just going to create a layout object. Okay, now we need to set the layout to our window. So self dot set layout and just pass in the layout object in there. Okay, and the next step is to begin creating some basic widgets. All right, so what do we need in a login form? Well, first let's create a title. Okay, and this can be called login form. Okay, and let's just add it to our layout now. So layout dot add widget and let's add it in there. Now, normally when you're doing using layouts like V box layout or H box layout, you just pass in the widget, but we're using Q grid layout and it actually takes in two additional parameters. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be the row and column. So this is going to be the title. So for now, I'll just place it in the zeroth row, which is the first row and the second column. All right. Second column means it'll be roughly in the middle because I think we'll have three columns in total. So yeah, now I'm going to create the username label. Okay. And let's just make it that username and let's, uh, let's remove that space over there. We'll add in spacing ourselves. So we don't need that. And then we'll just add it in. All right. And this, can go somewhere in the first row and the zeroth column. Okay. And next is going to be the password, the password label. And this can be just, you know, t t pass in password. And over here, I'm going to pass in the first row or actually the second row. It's going to be below the username and I'll pass in the zero at column. So let's just run our code and see what we have so far. Okay, uh, that's not very fancy, but we're getting there. It's a uh, basic progress. For now though, let's just uh, set the window title and I'll just set this to Quotra's legacy. It's just adding a personal touch to your window and we can also resize it, but let's avoid doing that. Okay, there's no, you know, you, sh you shouldn't do that when you're using layout, really, it kind of messes things up. It's better if you just use that with absolute positioning, you know, when you're using the move command. Uh, but yeah, that's up to you. So the next thing we do is begin creating the entry boxes. Okay, it's the widget that you use to take in input from the user. So I'll just call it input one. And I'll use the Q line edit widget to do so. And it doesn't take any parameters really. So I'll just add it to our layout. Okay, so this is going to be somewhere in front of the username. So it'll be on the same row as that, but it'll be one column ahead. So one, one. And let's create the second Q line edit widget. Okay, this is going to be for the password. And just like we did for the username, this is going to be somewhere on the same row as the password label and one column ahead of it. Okay, so let's run our code again. And here we have something very nice beginning to show up. That's not too bad. Great. Now let's um, add in some buttons. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, create button one. 
and Q push button. Okay, and this takes some simple text. We'll make one button which does something like clear. Okay, actually, let's just call it register and login. Okay, so layout dot add widget and we'll add in button one and we'll put it somewhere on the second row and the first column. Okay, and let me just copy this and create the final button and this can be called login and this can be two and this can be two. Okay, so everything should have gone all right. Okay, wait, something's off. Hold on. Let me just change that. And is it just me? But I think this, this should be on row three, not row two. Row two is where the uh, password queue line uh, edit widget is. Okay, so if I run this now, yeah. Not exactly what I wanted, but here you can see a problem. I've been using the indexes correctly, but I'm getting a rather strange output. So let's try and analyze our GUI window here and you know notice a few problems and how to fix them. So first of all, the button over here, the register button is much bigger than the login button. Why is this so? Well, the thing is the columns in the layout, they expand to fit the widget inside of it, the default size of the widget. The default size of the Q line edit widget is this big. So what it's doing is expanding the column it's in. And because the column is expanding, the button is also expanding. And that's the default nature of you know, these layouts that the widgets inside of them will expand to fill in the available space. All right. So you can kind of think of it that the Q line edit widget here stretched out the column and the button just took advantage of that extra space and resized itself. Okay, so this is the problem. We have one widget that's you know a bit a bit you know less in width, and we have one widget that's very wide. Okay, because this needs to be wide. The input dialog, this input um, you know, whatever you want to call it, a Q line edit or a input box or entry widget, whatever. So this needs to be wide. Okay, so what we'll do is that instead of trying to give them all equal you know proportions, we'll just give them uh, different sizes. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that if you imagine this grid layout as a system of cells, we should assign the wider widget with two cells instead of just one. And that's done very easily. All you need to do is go over here and over here, these parameters, you can see over here that there's row span and column span. Okay. You can actually give them more space. So what I'm going to do is keep the row span one, all right? It can be just one cell, you know, tall, and it can be two cells wide, all right? So if I do this, you'll notice that things are going to change, all right? This looks much better because now instead of this widget, you know, expanding the column it's in, instead of stretching it out, it's now divided itself between two columns. All right, this is much better and it looks a lot better now. Now, let me tell you something else interesting. Um, well, there's actually a lot of interesting things to share. So let's start one by one. First of all, we can do the same thing to this over here, this login form title. For example, let's say this was actually a lot larger. Login form with PYQT6, okay? So if I run it like this, then as you can see here, it's, it brings us back to the same problem that it's stretching out the column. Okay. So what you can do to rectify this is just give it the correct space, the correct span. So I'll make it three and uh, make it start from zero zero. So it occupies all three columns in the first row. But now we have a different problem. You see the label by default is left aligned. We didn't notice earlier because we put it inside the middle cell, but now it's more obvious. We need to center align it, align it somehow. Luckily, that's very easy. You just need to go here into the add widget function and you can just pass in the alignment flag and there are different types of alignments in here. Okay, we'll pick align center. If I run this, we can see here that we have the 
complete look, the complete basic look for our login form. There isn't really much else you can do, right? You have a username, you have a password, you have the correct labels, you have a register button, a login button. Now granted, they don't do anything yet. So let's try and you know do something with that for the login. Okay, for the login, let's try and implement something. So I'll make a function called login and this can you know be connected to the login button. So we'll do button two dot clicked dot sorry dot connect and we'll do self.login. So now the login function is connected to our button. So what if we just want to verify whether the username and password is correct? Okay, so here's the thing. We'll first need to give it access somehow to our QLine edit function. Okay, and we can easily do this using self, sorry, our QLine edit widget, I mean. All right, so we just do self and we can now access it inside our login function. We'll just do self.input2, all right, and do text. And this will give us the current text inside this widget, all right? So we can just do if the text is equal to uh, something like um, password, what kind of password should it be? Let's just go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Then print, uh, password is correct, okay? But let's also check the username because both of them need to be correct, right? So we'll make self over here as well, okay? And self over here as well. And then I'm gonna go here and just add in one more condition, self.input1.text is equal to code is legacy, okay? And and the, if both of these conditions are true, then we'll print out username and password are correct. All right, so let's try this. So let me just try in some wrong values first, some incorrect values. Okay, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Let me try logging in and this should not print out anything. And actually we should add in some kind of error case in here. So, you know, print out invalid if it's incorrect. Otherwise, we won't know if our function is actually executing or not. So let's just you know, type in those values, John Hubbard, and let's pass in one, two, three, four, five, and let's log in, and it says invalid. Okay, great. So if I try this again with Coder's legacy, and I try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I try to log in, it's gonna say username and password are correct. Now normally, of course, you would uh, not have something like this and you would have a file, maybe, a text file with valid usernames and IDs. You would iterate over those and then check them and you know, you know how it works, okay? Normally that would be the approach, but you can see the basic concept of being applied here for validation, okay? There's just one more thing I want to cover and that's, you know, applying a kind of privacy setting, a safety chest setting on the Q push button widget for the password. So, sorry, I mean the Q line edit widget, what, what am I saying? So over here, I just want to change it so that, you know how we type in passwords, it doesn't actually appear, right? What you end up seeing are like dots or asterisks. So I want that to happen, okay? So if I remember correctly, we do soft.input.2 and set echo, I think. Yeah, and over here, uh, we do Q line edit dot um, echo mode, I think. Hold on, let me just see the options. Yes, this is it. And we do password. There are many different types. You can try them out later. So I, I'm just gonna do password. And if I run this again, I'll type in coder's legacy. Okay, and you can see it, but when I type in the password, you won't, okay? I, did, I just typed in the correct password, so it's gonna work, okay? But you can't see it anymore, and that's the entire point, okay? So just one or two more minor things that I want to add. I want to, first of all, um, layout.set. This has a lot of interesting functions. You can add in some content margins. What this does is adds in some extra space between the layout and the window. So, oh, hold on. So yeah, 
let me just change that. This is for the left, top, right, and bottom. So if I run this, you'll see that there's now some space between the layout, which contains all the widgets, and the edge of the window. It's up to you if you want to use this option or not, because even the default one looks fine, all right? Other than this, there's also um, set spacing. So what this does, also by the way, there are different types of these. There's like vertical spacing, horizontal spacing. So you can change this vertically and horizontally as well. The set spacing function just does it for both. It just takes in one integer and applies that both vertically and horizontally. So now if I run this, we'll see that there's some more spacing between the widgets. Okay, and this is good if your widgets are getting too close to each other and you want to separate them a bit. So yeah, pretty handy. Okay, so that I believe covers most of it. I think we're done here. Now, this isn't actually everything and there's a part two to this project and that's gonna be about CSS, okay? It's actually a separate video on CSS styles and how we can use them inside, um, you know, how we can use them in PYQD6. It's actually called QSS. Now, in that video, I'm actually gonna be experimenting on this exact login form. So if you wanna see how you can apply CSS styles in PYQD6 specifically to this login form, go watch that video, okay? You'll learn both about CSS and you'll also see how we can make this login form more interactive, more user-friendly, more good looking, more visually pleasing, okay? So if you're interested in that, do watch the next video. I'll have it linked to the description below once it's out. So yeah, definitely do watch that video when it comes out. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. I'll include all relevant links in the description below. Okay, so you don't miss anything. And yeah, that's about it. Let's wrap this up. See you guys in the next video.